Hey guys, it's Danny. Now, today I'm actually venturing into new territory in response to some of your requests. For this 101, I am covering food dehydration. So what exactly is food dehydration and why do it? Here's the deal. All it means to dehydrate food is that you are removing the water from the food by circulating dry, hot air around and through the food. Now, because the temperatures are kept so low, the food is actually being dried out opposed to being cooked. The benefit with that is that you're able to maintain lots of healthy enzymes and friendly bacteria that would otherwise be destroyed if the food was being exposed to higher temperatures by cooking. Now, food dehydration is not a new technique. It's just new to people like yourselves and myself because we have grown up with such a large and efficient food industry that we've never really had the need to preserve food. But back in the day, it was absolutely essential. If you wanted to get through those long, cold months, you needed to preserve the abundance of the harvest that you got in the warmer months in order to get through the colder months. But now that we all have nice, warm, cozy homes, homes and grocery stores on every corner, what is the point of dehydrating your food? Well, here are some of the benefits that I have found. Number one, quality control. The number one thing that we can all do to improve and support our health goals is to upgrade the quality of the food that we eat. So making homemade snacks in a food dehydrator that you would normally buy at the grocery store gives you full control of the quality of the food that you're using and the ingredients. Plus, anything that you make homemade always tastes better. Number two, less waste. Now, if you have a garden or if you're a member of a CSA, then you know that there are often times when you end up with an abundance of fruits or vegetables that you just have no idea what to do with and sometimes they end up going to waste. But if you have a dehydrator, you can preserve those foods and then you have local seasonal food all year round. Number three, saves you money. Now, once you get past the initial investment of buying a dehydrator, not only are you going to waste less food, but you can really take advantage of specials at the grocery store and then make the most out of a great deal. And number four, it reconnects you to your food. Now for me, this one is really important because I have two little kids and I think these days it's so easy to take our food supply for granted. You know, you're not really sure where it comes from, you think you can get more whenever you want and it almost seems disposable. So taking the time to say, hey, I'm gonna preserve my food and I'm gonna think about this and I'm gonna make an effort really ties you back into that relationship with food. And to me, it's kinda like saying, hey, you know what, Mother Earth, we got mad respect for you. Now there's tons of different fruits and vegetables and snacks that you can make in a dehydrator. And I've been having lots of fun experimenting with different recipes. And one of our current family favorites are these tahini coated kale chips. I've got one bunch of kale that I have stemmed, washed, and then dried really well in my salad center. Then I tore it into bite-sized pieces, just like this. Now for the seasoning, I'm combining one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil, one tablespoon of tahini, which is like peanut butter but made with sesame seeds, one teaspoon of balsamic vinegar, two teaspoons of fresh crushed garlic, and then a little bit of salt and pepper right over the top. Then I'm just gonna use my hand to massage that dressing all over the kale leaves. Now at first you might think that this is not gonna be enough dressing to get all over those leaves, but you will see you just wanna keep on working it and you're gonna get a nice shine and a nice light coating on each of the leaves. That's all you need. Okay, so these are ready to go into the dehydrator. Now, if you've never seen a dehydrator before, this is what it looks like. It kinda looks like a mini oven. Now, I chose this one, it's the Tribest Sedona Combo Dehydrator because I like that it had a glass door in the front so I could see what's going on inside and the control panel is right at the top here. A lot of dehydrators, the control panel is in the back. So I like that it was accessible and I could see what was going on. Now it comes with nine mesh cooking trays just like this and you could cook with all nine at the same time. But for my kale chips, I'm only gonna need about four trays. So I'm just gonna lay my kale chips out on the trays and it's totally fine if they touch. I just don't want them to overlap because I want the air to be able to circulate around each separate leaf. 
Now, if you were making something that had more of a marinade or was wet or liquidy, then you would need to use one of the drying racks, which actually looks like this. You could also use a piece of parchment paper, but since our marinade is not super wet, we don't need to worry about that. Okay, so I'm gonna hit the power button. Then I get to pick if I want Fahrenheit or Celsius, so I'm gonna leave it on Fahrenheit. Then I'm gonna set the temperature and the time. Now, most fruits and vegetables are going to go somewhere between 130 and 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna set this at 135 degrees. And then I'm gonna set my timer for four hours. The next option I have are the trays. Now, if I wasn't using all nine trays or I wasn't using all the space like I am, you could actually set this to only do the top half or the bottom half. But since the kale is so big and curly, I had to spread them out. So I'm gonna set it for to use the top and the bottom trays. And then finally, we've got the mode, which is pretty unique. It gives you three options here. You could either choose the raw option, and this is what I'm using for my kale chips. This would be great for most fruits and vegetables. And this is gonna ensure that the internal temperature of the unit never goes above whatever you set it at. So if I go at 135 degrees, once it gets there, that heating element is gonna turn off, the unit is gonna stay on, and it's gonna maintain the low cooking temperature. And that really protects the enzymes in the food. Now the second option I have is the fast mode. Now this dries the food out at a higher temperature, so that would be great for foods that you don't need to worry about protecting the enzymes inside the food. So say you were gonna make something like a beef jerky. Fast mode would be perfect for that. By the way guys, if you are going to experiment making any type of jerky, what I learned is that you need to make sure that that meat reaches 145 degrees Fahrenheit for 45 minutes or 167 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. And then the last option you have here is the combo mode. Now the combo mode allows you to start it at a higher temperature and then it automatically drops down to the lower temperature to finish something off. So this is actually really good if you want to make something that has a high water content, like tomatoes. It kind of speeds the process up a bit. So for my kale chips, I'm going with the raw mode. And now that I've got it all set, I'm just gonna hit start and it's gonna do its thing for the next four hours. So check this out here. Now I know they're all done because they've shrunk up quite a bit. So all the water has been pulled out of them and they're nice and dry and crispy. As a matter of fact, listen to this. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Now, as for storage, moisture is the enemy of dried food. So you wanna make sure that you store it in an airtight container, a mason jar, some type of Tupperware, or even a little plastic baggie. You can gently squish all the air out and then make sure that it's sealed. And then just keep it in a cool, dry place. So this is one of the many different recipes I've been playing with in my dehydrator lately. But now I wanna hear from you guys. Have you ever tried working with a dehydrator before? If so, what do you like to make? What are some of the recipes you like to make? Or what type of recipes would you like to see me make? And if any of you are thinking about getting a dehydrator and you're interested in the one I was using today, this is what the box looks like. So it's called the TriBest Sedona Combo Dehydrator. And I'll leave a few links down in the description box below as to where you can buy it. If you guys wanna print the recipe, make sure you head on over to cleananddelicious.com. And if you like this video, then please like it and share it with all your friends, everybody. Let them know. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'm Danny Spees, and I will see you next time with some more clean and deliciousness. Now, while this is cooking for four hours, you're just going about doing whatever it is you do, and this is what I do while my kale chips cook. Not funny because I don't know how to dance. <laughs>